my name's Sarah Street and I'm a professor of film here at the University of Bristol. My original academic background is as a historian um, and I studied in Warwick University and in Oxford and then I worked in Oxford for a while before coming here to Bristol and uh, I've taught film ever since and for the last 10 years I've made colour film the main area of my research. Well, contrary to what many people think, um, the majority of silent film, that is the late 19th century until the end of the 1920s, up to about 80% of films had some form of colour or other. So this would be tinted, toned, stenciled. These were all what was known as applied techniques, dyes or paints that were added to the film. There was no photographic, photochemical process until the advent of Technicolor, which was developed into the 1920s, and then three-strip Technicolor was the first sort of broadly um, acceptable commercial system that came in in the mid-1930s. Particularly with um, photochemical film, people were very nervous that this would not be very accurate. Audiences would be very critical because the colours shown on the screen didn't equate with their own experience. There were all sorts of uh, problems that people identified with colour. So it was very hard for photochemical colour to make a big impression because it was always judged very harshly about whether it was accurate or even if it was expressionistic, um, you know, was it doing it? in the right way? Was the colour distracting from the main story? It was also very expensive. Uh, Three-strip Technicolor put a huge amount on the budget, so directors would have to make a big case that a particular film absolutely had to be made in colour for it to be viable. In the 30s, for example, before colour was the, was the mainstream, there was a huge amount of debate, and there were mainstream directors in Britain like Alexander Corder, who was very welcoming for Technicolor and had uh, lots of links with Herbert Kalmus, who was the, the main, main director of Technicolor. And uh, so there were lots of, of Technicolor films then made in Britain um, as they established um, a whole unit there in a lab. And, and Alexander Corder was one of the main directors who was very excited by this. And he was involved in producing a very famous early Technicolor film, The Thief of Baghdad, that was made in 1939. And of course, in Britain, there were, there were very famous directors who worked with colour, directors and writers like uh, Michael Powell, Emmerich Pressburger, of course, The Archers. There were some uh, other people, though, who were a bit more resistant and thought that colour um, could, be, could be a problem, was too expensive. There was, there was a big producer in the 1930s called John Maxwell who worked for a huge company called British International Pictures, and he said, oh, no, colour is simply an embellishment and it's just not worth the extra cost. And as we found, it felt like a commercial risk. But for some genres, colour was very appropriate, fantasy genres or musicals later. And as the, uh, the, the technology became cheaper, particularly in the 50s, with Eastman colour, um, it became much more an acceptable thing. And from the late 50s into the 60s, all films were pretty much made in colour. I think the move to digital is perhaps more seamless than the rupture that was represented by black and white norms having to change to colour. Um, simply because I think a lot of what digital does is to continue what was prized within photochemical cinematography and to enhance it in terms of definition or chromatic richness. With the example of colour, a lot of colour can be manipulated in the post-production uh, sphere, which it could in photochemical, but not to the extent that we associate with digital. And a lot of the certainly classically trained cinematographers um, prefer to use the aesthetic norms associated with photochemical film uh, within a digital context. So there's a sort of parallel there in the extent that a lot of people commenting on how colour should be introduced often said it shouldn't be distracting, it should never be used for its own sake. Um, we, the story is the main thing in a film and that's what will keep people there.